Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and today is the 15th day of June and it's a new start for me. It's my Teresa Winsler uh, mermaid. And I am delighted to let you know I got it started today. The fabric that I picked out for it is a um, piece that I think I was gifted, if I'm not mistaken, but it's Queen's Aunt, Queen Anne's Lace. And I wanted to make sure that it was gonna fit. I measured it twice and uh, it was supposed to fit. So I went ahead today as my start and I stitched the border all the way across from one end to the other so I know I have plenty of room here. And the next time I work on it, I'm gonna stitch the border outline at least down one side so that I make sure I have enough length. I'm almost positive I do, um, but I wanna make sure that I have it placed before I stitch a whole lot on this thing uh, and then go from there. I took the time today to read all the special instructions and uh, there were quite a few. Um, I am happy to, to tell you that um, there's a separate chart in here for the one over one skin and that's the only way it's charted. It's not charted for two over two. It's only charted for one over one. And then there's a separate chart for the back stitching. That is awesome. I like to make a working copy of my pattern and and color it with colored pencils as I go because it helps me to keep up with where I am. I don't get lost so badly in my pattern, especially one as busy as this one is. Um, I was thinking that this was almost full coverage. I thought that the um, background showed through because to me this looks the same color and I thought maybe there was a little bit of a gap there. No, it's full coverage. <laughs> it's completely full coverage. There's not a single spot from corner to corner to corner to corner. Nothing in here is not stitched. Oh well. So, I got it started today. I'm very happy about that. My friend Melody, who is starting this same chart with me, um, got ready to get started today and realized that the fabric that she had ordered for it was supposed to be a 32 count and it was really measuring up 40. Um, so it, the beads and stuff aren't gonna fit. So she went through her stash, she's found another piece that she thinks will work and she did get started on it today. And as uh, I mentioned to her, I'm starting on the border and she wrote me back a message and said, so am I. <laughs> But I guess this one kind of lends itself to that. You know, you can start right in the corner and just work your way down. So that's what I plan on doing. Very happy about it. Um, happy with the progress. Um, this is um, 395 stitches. So, you know, it was, it was a decent start. And I'm uh, gonna take a picture of it now and put it on my hashtag and uh, put my first day's work out there for everybody to see. Well, I hope you've had a good good start to your week. It's Monday, so I hope everything's going uh, well to get started for you. And I hope you have a great, great week of stitching. I just uploaded a video a few minutes ago um, of all my stitching progress, a little uh, explanation of how I kitted this project for my blends and my um, plans for July. So I hope you'll get a chance to watch it and I hope you'll let me know what you're going to be doing in um, Jolly July if you're joining in. So until tomorrow, I'll talk to you later. Happy stitching. Good night. Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, my name is Dina and today is Thursday. It is the 18th of June. I can't believe June is half over. Oh, time is really flying by. Well, for the last three days, I have been stitching on one of my mania starts. Hadn't planned on making it for three days, but life has really been busy. Um, good things, 
mostly good things. <laughs> my husband's car had to go to the shop for a window that wouldn't go up and down. That's not a good thing. But um, we got that fixed. And so uh, we were able to pick it up today. So that's a good thing. Um, so the last three days, I had to, I wanted to meet a goal. And I thought it was going to take two days to meet it. And I didn't get a lot of stitching time for two days. So today I was able to finally finish my goal and I want to share that with you today. So I went back through my uh, mania starts and I looked to see if there was at least one more that I thought might be easy enough to finish in about a two days of stitching time frame. I thought this one could happen in two days and if I had stitching time like I usually do. It probably would have, but there was a lot more stitching in here than it looks like. It's deceptively a lot of stitching. <laughs> you know how those are? You look at something, you think that'll be a really quick stitch, and then you get started on it, and you think, golly, will it ever stop? Well, this, this was blocks of color in a lot of it, but some of the blocks were fairly large. But this is Holy Night Snapshot. It's a Pine Mountain publication. It was a 2015 pattern. And um, it called for uh, various flosses. It called for DMCs, it called for gentle arts, and it called for weeks dye works. And unfortunately, even the colors that I had in the gentle arts and week dye works, they're in other projects and I don't know which ones. So I did the DMC colors as called for, and then I did my own conversion for the Gentle Arts and the Weeks Dye Works. And so if you're interested, I will list it below. But this is what the pattern looks like. And this is my finish. I like my colors. I think they're, they're muted, but they're rich. And I like that. Love this little pattern. It's so cute. These little uh, photo corners that we used to have in photo albums. You know, very, very much a, a throwback. Uh, I think that's precious. And I'm kind of thinking that I might make this into a flat fold. Um, I've been framing a lot lately and I'm just looking for uh, maybe a different way, you know, to finish a few things. Um, so that I can sit them around differently in different groupings. And so I'm thinking this one might become a flat fold. But at this point today, I just finished it and I am tickled to death. So I, uh, I had a question today on my latest video that I put up. Someone asked me, how many whips are you up to now? I had to stop and count. <laughs> so I did count and I had 19 active whips today. So now with this finish, I have 18 active whips, which is the largest number I think I've ever had. And, and, and it'll get bigger in July. So I'm still gonna be trying to work on my whips this month. Um, I don't know if there's any more that I could even get to a finish, but um, I'm gonna try to work on some of those whips that I'll be skipping working on in the month of July so that I can get some work on them but very tickled, very delighted to have a finish. So what else have I been up to? Well, I have an FFO. I finished this in Mania, well, right after Mania. This was a Mania start, and this is the Let's Bark, and I just love it. I wanted a red frame. I went and I found a couple, um, but when I looked at the back, they didn't have this deep pocket in the back like I like. But this one did. I almost missed it. It was in a different section and um, it's got a curved front. Can you see? Isn't that neat? It's very different. And it has a silver inset there that's working like a mat for me and it makes it bright and sparkly, which I love. I just think it looks great. Um, the silver looks really nice next to the gray speckled in the fabric. I think it really brings it out. And I'm just extremely happy with the way this one turned out. And it's just an eight by 10 photo frame. So whoever wins this pattern, when I draw for it this week, 
um, know that if you do it on 32 count, it'll fit in an eight by 10 <laughs> without any trouble whatsoever, <laughs> as you can see here. Uh, so I really like my little fully finished Let's Bark. I'm really delighted I got to share that with you tonight. So, I have no clue what I'll be working on tomorrow because having worked on this for three days, I've pushed something off today that I'll have to go look at and see what I missed and then see what sales are coming up, you know, what prompts I might need to work on and I'll redo a plan for the next day or two till I catch up. But it was well worth it. It was well worth it. So, um continue to march forward to July. I'm so delighted uh, at how many of you have shared with me uh, that you are going to be stitching in Jolly July um, with all of us that are doing Christmas stitching. And I'm also pleasantly surprised at how many of you have a Teresa Winsler new start or an older one that you can pull out, a whip that you haven't worked on in a while and you're gonna pull it forward and join the Teresa Winsler sale. So I'm very tickled about that. I hope you have a great weekend of stitching. Tomorrow's Friday, starts the weekend, and I hope that you will enjoy uh, some stitching time this weekend. In the meantime, before I have another update for you, I hope you are safe and well. Happy stitching, everyone. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today is Friday. It is the 19th of June and I'm gonna try to do this fairly quickly because I have a little puppy dog who is pitching a fit to get in my sewing room. I had to close the door for a second because I've tried to record this about five times and every time she comes running in with a toy wanting me to play and jumps up and just about knocks me over now. So I'm gonna do this fast <laughs> so I can get in there and play with her. But today I was working on a prompt. This is my Plum Street Samplers. It was a start for, for Stitch Mania. And this is Soul Sisters. And when I started it with Stitch Mania, I did this top border right here. That's what I had done. So today for a prompt in Cheryl McKinney's group, we were to stitch on something that represented a tradition of some kind. And I chose this one because these two women in this picture reminded me of the old-fashioned quilting bees. They've got long dresses, they've got dresses with quilt patterns on them. This top reminds me of a quilt. And I just remember my mom talking about quilting bees where women would go to another woman's house and quilt, help her finish a quilt that was either a wedding quilt for their daughter or a baby quilt or something like that. And um, in my lifetime, I've actually been to one quilting bee, a real for real quilting bee in the country. I didn't know how to quilt, so all I got to do was watch. But I can remember it, I was a little girl. And it was, it was quite exciting to hear these ladies chatting and laughing, but they were working so fast and furiously. Um, so that's what that reminded me of, and so that's what I'm gonna use it for. And I did stitch uh, 456 stitches, and the prompt was either three, four, or 500 for however many points you wanted. So I chose the 400 one because I'm at a good stopping point. So this is what I did today. I got the two houses, the roofs, and all the windows in both of the two houses done. And so the next time that I stitch, I will be able to either come down here and stitch the two girls and then do all the back filling or if I'm doing uh, stitching with someone else on Zoom, backward, you know, just filling in would be great stitching to do for this one. But that's what I got done today for the prompt. So I'm really happy about that and got to touch that whip for the second time. First time since Mania. So that was fun. Now I will see what the other prompts hold for me and see what whips I have that can meet them. And I will get busy uh, working on that for the remainder of the weekend and, um, See how far I can get. <laughs> I hope you have a great weekend. We have a lot of activities on tap for the weekend. Um, it's our wedding anniversary tomorrow, but our son is on call and can't watch the dog for us to go out because he might get called in and then she would be here by herself and we, don't, we hate that. So we're gonna flip-flop and celebrate Father's Day tomorrow 
and uh, we're cooking, uh, my son is cooking for us. He's cooking steak and scallops for a surf and turf for his dad. And, um, and then we will have our anniversary lunch. My husband and I prefer to go out for lunch because it's usually on a lunch menu, more affordable on a retired person's income. And uh, so we will go and have lunch together on Sunday for our wedding anniversary. My son's not on call Sunday, so he can watch Coco with no problem to do that. So that's what's on tap for our weekend. Plus, I'm hoping to get lots of stitching in. It's threatening to rain here, and, and stitching while it's raining outside is a lovely feeling for me. Um, I enjoy it. So I hope you're having a great weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Happy stitching. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and today is Saturday. It is June 20th. So, <laughs> I had a great surprise today. I got a phone call from Hobby Lobby and my framing was already ready. So I was pretty excited. The first one you will recognize. It is my uh, Jim Shore 12 Days of Christmas, which was a Dimensions uh, kit. And this is it, fully framed. I'm pretty excited about it. I decided not to use a mat because of the beautiful quilted star in the background. And I chose this frame because I felt like this wooden staff had this beautiful brown to brown gold color in it. And all of the background had that kind of a golden yellow uh, color in the bag as well and so I wanted to pull that out because I didn't want to highlight any one of the bright colors I felt like the colors were bright enough I didn't need a bright mat and I didn't need a bright frame so I went with this dark wooden frame that gradiates to the front and then has this gold tone near the front and I think it complements the piece very well I'm, I am very very pleased with it so this is the 12 days of christmas the jim shore version and i am thrilled with how it looks really pretty so i will be um putting this away for christmas and bring it back out but the fun part was my son gifted me this kit to stitch and he was with me today when i picked it up and i hadn't described it for him and so when he saw it, he just said, oh, I like it. I like the way that you had the frame all the way right up to the picture. He thought it looked really good that way. So he's quite the artist. So I liked his feedback and was really pleased with it. So there's the 12 days of Christmas one. Now this next one I'm gonna share with you, I picked up today as well, but you may not remember it because it is an older, older piece that I stitched a long time ago. And I actually bought a stand. I was gonna put it with a cloth backing and I was gonna hang it on the stand because that's the way it was displayed in the store and I thought it was so cute. But for whatever reason, I could never make myself find the right fabric. And um, I kept looking but couldn't find what I wanted. And I think part of it was that the border is done in a wildflower variegated, highly variegated floss. It was the first time I'd ever used a wildflower floss. And I'm very pleased with the way it looked, but I couldn't find a fabric that I really wanted. So when I went to the um, frame store and I started looking at it, the first frame that I saw that caught my attention was something very bold and very different. But because this is for my cross stitch room, I wanted it to be a little more artsy. I wanted it to be very creative. And the young lady who was helping me pick out the framing and the mat, I uh, found a beautiful dark teal linen mat. And part of the variegation in this piece is teal. And so we put them together and although it sounds kind of wild, I think it turned out really pretty. So this is my um, fruit of my labor. This is from um, Foxwood Crossings. And it basically says, the fruit of my labor is tomorrow's heirloom. And it says stitcher in residence. There you can see it's a green, almost metallic look. And then I've got this beautiful blue mat to go with it that is actually a linen 
and that's to pull out the blues in the border. I'm sorry you're getting such a glare, but there it is. And I just think that turned out really, really modern looking. And so I love the just position of the older craft, as in the cross stitch, and then the mo more modern looking frame. You know, we, we've brought cross stitch into the future. We've made it more modern, and there are a lot more modern patterns and techniques and things than there used to be. And so I think this sort of blends the two worlds. At least that was what I was going for, and I hope you like it. So this one is uh, a frame piece that I've had in my, as you call, under the bed box for a long, long time. And I'm really tickled that I can now put it in my sewing room. So these are my FFOs. Thanks for letting me share them with you today. Now I'm going to go back to stitching and hopefully I'll have an update for you soon. Happy stitching, everyone. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Tina again, and it is still the 20th of June, and I am back to give you a bit of an update. I had mentioned earlier in just the previous clip that I would be stitching, and I hope to get to come back and give you an update fairly soon, and I'm glad to report that I can. Today, I started another Advent Animal. This is Cassie Cow. And I started her for a couple of reasons. One, there is a um, sow for a new start in new starts in 2020 or something like that um, that started today, and also um, for two prompts in Cheryl McKinney's group. The two prompts were that we were to stitch on a piece that could be. A relative of another piece that we have so I felt like this Cassie cow would be a perfect relative because I've got 25 of these little advent animals that look like they're all one family and so that's what I was thinking about for that prompt and so I stitched um, 456 stitches um, for the prompt and then I went back and kept working on it for a second prompt in that same um, challenge, that same weekly challenge, because the next prompt was to stitch on something that was so fun, it was like playing. It was like you were having pl playful time, and these are so fun. And so it really met both prompts beautifully. And so I just went ahead and stitched on it until I finished it. So the second prompt, I stitched an additional 485 stitches to bring Cassie Cow to a finish. So here she is. I love her expression. She's got that one eyebrow kind of cocked on this side over here. Can you see it? And then she's got a kind of a smirk on her face. I don't know if it's because she's got one of those chocolate chip cookies hidden in her pocket or just what, <laughs> but I just love it. I think she's precious. Love her little apron action going on there. And she's got her beautiful red bow tied up on top of her head. Cute, cute, cute. So there's Cassie Cow, number 14 out of 25 awesome. So that is my finish for today. I had actually slated two days to get her done and um, I was fortunate to get uh, enough time to stitch today to eke out that finish. So I'm very happy about that. But that leaves me tomorrow an open day to do whatever I want. And that's probably a good thing since it is Father's Day and um, even though we have had to flip-flop our celebrations because of our son being on call today and not wanting to leave Coco alone if he got called into work for a long time and we were off celebrating, you know, our anniversary, we decided to do that tomorrow. So we're going to go out for lunch. We're going to go early because it's Father's Day, so it's going to be crowded, but that's okay. We'll make it. And, um, 
I don't know how much stitching time I will actually get. So I'll have to decide what I'm going to work on tomorrow when the time comes. But in the meantime, I hope you're enjoying your weekend. I hope you're enjoying your stitching. And um, I hope to be back with an update in the next day or two to get have you, uh, something else to share with you. So happy stitching, everyone. Good night. Hi everyone, welcome, this is Dina, and it is Sunday, it is the 21st of June. Happy Father's Day, all of you fathers out there. Today, my husband and I went out to lunch to celebrate our wedding anniversary because we flip-flopped celebrating Father's Day yesterday um, so that our son could celebrate it with us because he was on call and he couldn't leave the house. So. Uh, we stayed home yesterday and celebrated Father's Day instead, and then today we went out for our anniversary. So it was a wonderful day. Um, and then this afternoon, when I got home, uh, fairly late this afternoon, probably about 3 o'clock or so, um, I settled in and I wanted to do some stitching. And I wanted to stitch on a prompt in Cheryl McKinney's group that said that you were to stitch on something that had at least 10 parts to it. And fortunately for me, this was kind of one of my mania starts that I wanted to work on anyway. And this is a Jardin Privé pattern. And I believe the translation is Scissors and Bobbins. Um, and it's from my sewing room, as you can imagine. And I started it in mania, and I did the blue flower and the flower stem. That's, that's what I had done right there. So when I came in today, I did this spool, this spool with its topper, the little B, if you can see the B, and its flight pattern. And I did this spool up to the top of the spool. I didn't get the house on there. But that that I accomplished was 503 stitches, and the highest level on my prompt was 500 stitches. So that was more than enough uh, to meet the prompt. And so I was ready to post it and it's 10.30 at night, so I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> so that I'm gonna call it a day, but I wanna show you what I got done. This is mine. Now my fabric is lighter than the called for fabric. It was something I had in my stash, and I thought it would look really pretty with these colors. And it does, except this ecru doesn't show up really well on it, so I did backstitch the ecru there so it would show up a little more. And I backstitched the little uh, motif here that's supposed to be a sheep, I think from a distance. And then when I got to the little fly, the wings on that, I decided I would do it in B5200 so it would look more white. And so I have decided that I'm going to do part of this in white white, the B5200. And part of it I will do in ecru, but I'm going to do the house in the white, and I'm going to do this sheet in ecru, and I'll backstitch it so it can be seen. And then over here I will do that house in the bright white so that it shows up a little better. The sheep down here, I will do an ecru and just backstitch them. That way it'll have a little bit of a difference, you know, in the two. But I'm doing this uh, as a stitch along with my friend Elaine McGuire. Uh, she is the lady who was so kind enough to teach me how to crochet and get me through that baby blanket I wanted to donate to the ladies at church. And um, I think she's farther along than I am, but I am delighted that I actually got to pick this up and work on it again. And so I'll send her a picture of it, let her see that I've done some work on it before I put it away again this month. So that's been uh, a good accomplishment today. I'm, I'm pleased with my progress. And I will look at my calendar in a few minutes to figure out what I'm stitching tomorrow. Um, I know there's one more prompt that I have left in Cheryl McKinney's group for that weekly challenge. And I may just go ahead and see what it is I need to stitch to meet that prompt and get that done tomorrow. We'll see. But I hope you have had a great weekend. 
And I think what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and uh, turn the camera around and do the random number generator so I can go ahead and declare the winner for my pattern Let's Bark that I was offering to give away and get that off to someone who might wanna stitch it. So I'll do that now and then that will be the end of this video for this time. Happy stitching everyone. Hello everyone, it's time to select the winner for the Let's Bark pattern. And I am delighted to say we had 38 people interested in stitching this pattern. So we're gonna go in here, let me swap hands, <laughs> and change this to 38. And we will hit generate. And it's number 17. Number 17 is Farms Boys Love. Farm Boys Love. I'm so delighted that you won this pattern and I'm gonna send you a message and I hope that you will send me your mailing address as soon as you get the message. Thanks so much for everybody for participating in the opportunity to stitch Let's Bark.